the Supreme Court, vaccine mandates, and the idea of God-given rights in America. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt, and I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. And before we get into that, I want to give a quick mention to edify.app backslash podcasts. Edify, that is the platform to go to if you are looking for faith-based podcasts. And guess what? Bold and Blunt is among their featured lineup. So please go to WashingtonTimes.com and subscribe to Bold and Blunt there or check it out at Edify and subscribe there. Of course, you can always get Bold and Blunt anywhere podcasts are offered. God-given rights and the U.S. Supreme Court. I know you followed the vaccine mandates, the OSHA case, as well as the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services case, CMS case. I think that's what that acronym stands for, CMS. But anyhow, I'm pretty sure that you followed what came out of the U.S. Supreme Court. And conservatives of course, we're cheering the fact that six of the nine justices slapped down Joe Biden's attempt to force private businesses to act as the enforcement arm of the federal government and dictate that all employees must have the coronavirus vaccine, show proof of the coronavirus vaccine, or wear face masks forever after, or even worse, get fired from work, stay home. I know you followed that, and I know you also followed the 5-4 decision that two considered conservative justices on the court sided with the three far leftists on the court to say that it was A-OK for Team Biden and his merry band of tyrannical administrators to force medical workers in hospitals that take Medicare and Medicaid funding, which is pretty much every hospital in America, to force these healthcare workers to get the vaccine or lose their jobs. So conservatives, by and large, were cheering one decision, the OSHA decision, and casting sad eyes at the CMS decision. And it is a win of sorts, the fact that private businesses in America were just given the thumbs up by the U.S. Supreme Court that, yes, they don't have to bow down to government will and be the enforcers for government dictates that aren't passed by the legislative branch, but rather just uttered uttered from the mouth of the executive, the president. So that's good. But the bigger issue here, as always in America, is the idea that in America, and this is the source of our greatness, in America, our rights come from God, not government. That means that each and every citizen, each and every man and woman in America was born with inherent rights that the government is not supposed to intrude upon, seize upon, attack, and strip. And so if that's the standard, which indeed it is, then both these Supreme Court rulings are in conflict with that standard. Let me play you something, a quick clip from David Barton, who, of course, is one of the leading analysts and authors in America, applying founding father principles and biblical ideas to modern day politics. Let me play you this and see what you think. And that if you go back to when we signed the Declaration of Independence, we think of that's when we separated from Great Britain. Not so. Virginia actually separated from Great Britain before they signed the Declaration. And so George Mason is the guy who is a chief author of the 1776 Virginia Constitution where they separated. Now, that, that Virginia Constitution, that 1776 doc, really cool document here. Jefferson used a lot of the language that Mason had used in that 1776 Constitution, later used in the Declaration of Independence. So Mason has a big influence, but he made a statement that is so profound 
They included it in that Virginia Constitution, and they've still preserved it to this day, and it's a great statement. Here, Listen here. He, said. he says, no free government nor the blessings of liberty can be preserved to any people but by a frequent recurrence to fundamental principles. Did you catch that? No liberty can be preserved except by going back to foundational principles. That means courts, reliant as they are on case precedents, on looking to cases, past cases and past case decisions to justify their rulings in the current cases before them, aren't actually doing their proper judicial duty. They're supposed to apply the cases before them to foundational American principles, to the foundations of America's laws and governance. And what's that? The Constitution, the founding documents, the principles contained within the Declaration of Independence that say, we are all endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, among those life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All court decisions are supposed to start with those considerations, not with what the last court ruled and what the previous rulings on cases similar to the case before that particular court said, not based on what other judicial units found, what other justices ruled. That's all well and good in terms of considering cases at hand. But the basic justification for court rulings, court determinations, are supposed to be based upon the foundations of America's liberty. Judges are supposed to look first to the root and then consider what other courts have ruled, what other decisions have come forth. They're not supposed to skip over that thing in the Constitution and that idea in America that has sustained us so well for so many decades. The one that says individualism, the one that says our rights come from God, the one that says, hey, government, you can't tell me to do that because you don't have ownership of that particular right. You don't have authority. You only have authority as granted by the Constitution. So judges, justices, including the U.S. Supreme Court, are supposed to regard the Constitution and its idea of individualism, limited government, and rights given to the individual from God not government, in all the cases they consider. So when you look at both these cases, the OSHA ruling 6-3 in favor of freedom and the CMS ruling 5-4 in favor of government clampdowns on liberties, the basic theme here is that in neither case did the justices look first to the idea of God-given rights before ruling. What they did was a sort of wishy-washy interpretation of the Constitution, of the government's concerns about safety and security for individuals, of the balance between civil liberties, individual liberties, and the greater good. And they came up with this sort of compromise where they gave a head nod to the private sector the businesses, and by logical extension, the citizens who work for private businesses, and a head nod to the government by finding cause to tie funding to individual rights. Look, what they did with the CMS case is basically say, if you work for an organization that accepts federal funding in any way, then that means the federal entities, the bureaucrats, the government, has the right to tell you what to do in your life, to tell you whether you have to take a vaccine or not. Because by taking federal tax dollars, you have, in essence, the justices ruled, ceded your civil liberties to the federal government. Well, 
The only entity that really has the right to do that in America is the military, because when you sign the dotted line, you actually go in with eyes wide open that you are actually ceding some of your constitutional rights to become part and parcel of the national security fighting force. And so because of that, because of those job duties, that responsibility, you voluntarily give up some of your freedoms that private sector Americans still hold. You give up, say, some of your freedoms of free speech. You give up your right to make certain decisions because you put yourself under the authority of your commanding officers. But American citizens outside the military haven't done that. So if you're a nurse in a hospital, you're still a private citizen, whether or not that hospital takes federal dollars. You see what I'm saying here? It's not the fact that you work for a private business that makes you a private citizen. It's the fact that you're born in America that automatically gives you that title of being a private citizen, granted by the Creator, by our Creator, with certain unalienable rights. The government, the courts, the bureaucrats, they don't get to water those rights depending on where you work. How is that logical? How is that in line with God-given rights? It's not. It's not. And what these two court rulings did was create a class division in America where those who work for private businesses are considered private citizens, worthy of God-given rights. But those who work for organizations that take federal tax dollars, they're not so much private citizens worthy of God-given rights as others. That's egregious. That's a concern. And that's where the battle in America has to take place. If you as a patriotic American aren't fighting for God-given rights, you're missing the battlefield. You're playing whack-a-mole and you're playing into the left's hands because when the left gets to water down the notion of God-given rights, little by little, case by case, court hearing by court hearing, legislation by legislation, they move the ball a little bit farther down the field toward socialism, toward Marxism, toward collectivism. We're either a nation of individualists or we're a nation drifting toward the communist idea of collectivism. And what keeps the wall in place is Americans who insist, who demand the recognition from government that individual rights come from God and that government does not have the right to dole to some versus dole to others. So there's an opinion on the two court cases heard before the U.S. Supreme Court. And for further discussion, I have with me Dave Kubal. He is the president of Intercessors for America, which is a great nonprofit that puts prayer at the forefront of fighting political and cultural battles, which is what needs to take place in this country, which is how you keep God-given rights at the forefront and keep government in its secondary subservient role that Founding Fathers actually intended them to be in. So Dave, thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. I'm so glad to do it. So you as president of Intercessors for America have a unique viewpoint of what's taking place at the Supreme Court, at what just took place at the Supreme Court, uh, because your organization looks at faith first and then politics and then the culture, which is kind of how Founding Fathers intended it. So what is your response to the Supreme Court rulings on, on the vaccine mandates? Well, we actually signed on to an amicus that was submitted in the, um, the federated business uh, case, one of the two cases that was decided yesterday. Of course, uh, <clears throat> broadly speaking, um, this court decision that um, decided that OSHA does not have the authority 
authority to mandate, mandate a medical procedure such as COVID-19 vaccination uh, for 84 million workers. It was a 6-3 decision. The Supreme Court decision describes um, OSHA as not designed to protect the general public health, but rather simply to protect workplace situations. And so, as I mentioned, <clears throat> we filed an amicus in this case making uh, this very point that President Biden and the federal government are not authorized by Congress to do, uh, to do just this, to uh, put forth this vaccination mandate. And really what we did is we agree agreed with, if you can imagine this, what President <laughs> Biden said just about 10 days before the hearing when he was speaking to the governors, uh, the 50 governors across the United States, and he said, there is no federal solution to COVID. That's the words of President Biden. Right. And that was the point of our amicus, and that was ultimately the decision of the court. So jump to the CMS uh, ruling. What did you think of that one? Well, of course, I was uh, a I was disappointed in that for religious reasons, uh, religious freedom reasons in um, allowing those uh, healthcare workers who have religious freedom concerns, which is my greatest concern in this whole thing. Uh, there really is no room for that. But in the basis of that, that decision was this phrase, do no harm. And so there were, they were able to get five of the justices to to rally around that point that this vaccine or this medical procedure, this gene therapy, as some have called it, um, is is something that does enough harm, enough good that it will um, it needs to be mandated. Now, just so everybody understands, I think this affects around 10 million right. United States um, people uh, po- in our population. And it has to do with federal dollars going through the Medicare, Medicaid system, which touches virtually every hospital and healthcare worker in the U.S. And so it's not only those who um, work front lines with, uh, with patients, but it's actually those that service those that are on the front lines. So it's, it's pretty broad. And because it's federal dollars, these people become, to some degree or another, a federal employee. I come and um, so that decision um, was such. Let, let me take a minute to explain my, my problems with both rulings and just get your response. Sure. Uh, I, I know that as conservatives, we're, we're cheering the 6-3 win, right? We're cheering the fact that OSHA got slapped back. But I don't understand how the six who voted for for the uh, the citizens, basically, of America in terms of OSHA, two of them can defect and vote on the CMS case in line with the government. Because if in this country our rights come from God, not government, right? Healthcare workers are certainly uh, individual citizens as well. And just because they work for a facility that takes federal dollars doesn't make them all of a sudden less citizens with rights that come from God, not government. You, you see where I'm going with this? So oh, it, absolutely. It, it, oh, it opens the door for now, the left, to justify using that CMS case to make just about everybody in America still to have the vaccine. Because transportation takes money from feds, right? Schools take money from feds. So it just, uh, I know you know where I'm going with this. If you could just respond to these concerns. Well, in they're embedded in the earlier decision that we talked about because in those in that decision you can really break the justices into groups of three the right. three dissenters um, and then you take the those that were in the opinion of slapping down the mandate you have groups of three um, three and three the first group of three um, is a group of people that still believe that there were there is a case for limited, small, specific application of the vaccine mandate through OSHA. Yep. It's small and it's limited. It's not across the board. So that 
probably is part of the rationale for um, the CMS case. But maybe even more troubling um, is the other three justices that slapped down this mandate are of the opinion that if Congress passed a law um, supporting vaccine mandates, then the executive branch could, in fact, um, execute that law, the legislative branch and the executive branch. This decision yesterday released was all about the executive branch's power. And so the judicial branch, three of these nine justices, three of the six that slapped down the executive powers of the executive branch said that if the legislative branch comes up with a vaccine legislation, it could be enforced. So so not only is there concern on the CMS um, ruling, but, you know, could the Congress pass a law at some point? Now there's case law supporting the potential application of something like the vaccine mandate. More than that, even, Dave, you have to look also at what's taken place in the military, right, with the religious exemptions. And we also have questions about federal contractors and federal employees. And I just feel like the left is going to take all the loopholes that have been created by these Supreme Court rulings and just run roughshod with them. And conservatives, groups like yours, are going to be playing whack-a-mole to try and beat back the onslaught yeah well you know the the old saying is the left never misses never misuses a perfectly good emergency and and that's what they're doing they're taking every opportunity they can in order to uh, get their agenda done of um, more chaos in a culture and that produces power vacuums in which they get the opportunity to come in and fill with more regulation and and more limits of our freedom so you know that you're right this is not something that's going to go away and we as patriots but more importantly we as men and women of faith who understand as you said that our rights come from god god's kingdom rules god is the god of nations god is the, the one who sets nations in place and keeps them together we need to continue to appeal to him for our nation and pray and intercede for leaders uh, who have a fear of God at least, hopefully a faith in God, but that they might rise to power and, and fight back these forces that we're seeing today. We absolutely do, because the fact that three of the justices on the high court actually found cause to side with the government over a national vaccine mandate is shocking to me. I mean, that's how close we came. Just a couple more votes. That's how close we came to losing some serious individual liberties that would have opened the door for massive government intrusions on our God-given rights. And where, where do you stand on this, on this statement that these two cases just show how far we have strayed from founding father principle based on the idea that rights come from God, not government? Yeah. Well, you know, we've seen that slippery slope for for years. I mean, just, you know, think back to Obergefell. Yes. Um, you know, the um, legalization of same-sex marriage. And the whole rationale of that case was built upon this dignity that, that people have and that our culture has evolved to the point that we can now accept these people have dignity, and it was all so man-centered and secular, secularly minded that um, that you know our judicial system. Of course, you know you know the history better than I. You know, way before um, case law was something that our judicial system relied upon. It relied upon natural law, and that's the context of our founding fathers, and that's the origin of our judicial system that that there is a God of nature, you know, as our founding documents describe. And it is that God that provides laws that has uh, written the laws and it's government's responsibility just to execute those laws. And so we're so far from that. You know, I was excited when um, 
uh, Justice uh, Amy Coney Barrett was um, sworn in. She um, has a lot of history in um, studying in, in natural law, and I'm, I'm still waiting for that to come forth and <laughs> to have that come out in one way or another. And of course, we've got Justice Thomas, who is super conservative along, along those lines, too. But, but you're right. I mean, we live in a day and age where we are seeing um, a, a secular government um, being railed in or let loose, depending on the case, through a secular-minded judicial system. So I don't want to end this on a on a on a dark and gloomy note because I know that <laughs> we're supposed to be celebrating the Supreme Court wins right now, but I can't help yeah. being a little bit cynical anyhow. So uh, let's pivot and just talk about some of the wins that you have seen through your Intercessors for America nonprofit. Uh, what have you guys have in the works now? What what wins can you tout from recent times? Anything you'd like to detail along those lines? Well, let's talk about what's going on today. I mean, let's talk about the COVID pandemic. And we have been praying um, since the very beginning that the truth would be known. And only in the last, I'm going to say two weeks, have I seen a wave of common sense that is an answer to prayers that we have yet to see in this entire journey of the pandemic that we're in, and and let me just detail a few things, and I think people will be encouraged that, you know, early on, it was all about flattening the curve, and you (laughs) heard immunity and all of that, you know, if if you think way back, you can remember all of that, and and the whole, all that everybody's hope was put in in the vaccine, but but just recently, herd immunity has come back to the surface, and just within the last couple of days, the NCAA has recognized herd immunity along with vaccinations. Yep. And if you look at any, this is something you don't read a lot, lot about at all, is what's the reinfection rate of somebody who had COVID and was a part of the 99% that survived? The reinfection rate, from all the studies I read, is about 1%. So I said early on that well, there is a cure to this COVID pandemic, and it's called God-given immunity, and we're seeing that work its way up. But not only that, people are beginning to talk about that. Number That's number one. Number two, from the very beginning, we were talking about how um, our, or questioning why are people going to the hospital. Is it because of COVID, or is it with COVID, or do they get COVID when it's there? Well, if you can imagine this, Governor Hochul with um, the state of New York, the governor of New York, actually questioned whether or not people were admitted into her hospitals in her state with COVID or because of COVID. Yep. Unbelievable wave of common sense. So that's number two. Number three, CDC Director uh, Walensky recognized in the last week or so, a group, a, a large group of, of people who um, passed away because of, of um, COVID and found that 75% of those that passed away had four or more comorbidities. So in other words, you have to be sick in order to die from COVID. And didn't we say that from the very beginning? So a wave of common sense, number three. And then the last one, of course, is what has come out in the last week or so that, again, at the beginning of the pandemic, that um, masks didn't work, right? It didn't make sense that the, um, the virus is small enough to get between the pores of the cloth mask. And then, you know, the left went crazy and, you know, we got to wear masks. But then all of a sudden, here in the last week or so, we're back to cloth masks don't work. So, you know, as we watch this play on, we need to continue to pray and intercede so that common sense will prevail. And, you know, we've got to do the smart thing and the right thing, but we got to recognize that, that this, this virus is certainly real, but it is just a little bit more deadly than the common uh, flu. And we've got to react accordingly to our culture. Of course, we, um, we cannot, we cannot accept a vaccine mandate for something that's a little bit more lethal than the common cold. When the polio virus that killed 30% in the 50s, there 
was not even a vaccine mandate back then. It's so are you encouraged? Yeah, yeah, actually, I am. And you prompted me to add one thing. In addition to New York questioning about the hospital statistics, Massachusetts has too. They raise the same issues. Are people being admitted right. because of COVID or with COVID? So, oh, no. yeah, I, I, no. I, I am optimistic based on what you just outlined. So thank you for that. And the Intercessors for America is such a great group. I implore people listening right now to check you out. It's Intercessors intercessorsforamerica.org, right? That's the website address? Um, yeah, I just tell people, Google Intercessors for America. The web- website is officially ifapray.org, but uh, just Google Intercessors for America, we'll come up. ifapray.org, yeah, because I Googled Intercessors for America, so I just assumed that was the actual URL. Uh, Dave Kubal, thank you so much for the work you do, and thank you for the words thank of inspiration you. today. I really appreciate it. Glad to do it. God bless you. Keep up the fight. God bless. And God bless America too, right? We certainly need God's blessings on this country because without, look at where we go. Look at where we stray. We lose so quickly the idea of individual rights coming from God and so quickly move into the sphere of government being in charge of dictating who gets certain rights versus who does not. If God isn't at the forefront of American society, then America is just a plot of land, nothing great about it, nothing exceptional, certainly no spirit of freedom that reigns. So get your prayer on, Intercessors for America, great group to support. I wanna thank you for listening to Bold and Blunt. If you are a regular listener, thank you so much for your support. If not, check out Bold and Blunt, not just at WashingtonTimes.com, but also at edify.app backslash podcast. Edify, the place to go for faith-based podcasts. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time and don't forget, stay blunt, stay bold.